every every show has like those like little rift to open the show that was mine that was pretty awesome wasn't it okay welcome to a new look to, for the 16 game sample size videos in which i just set down this tripod monday night football just ended and i'm going to talk about it because those those it takes a long time to find all those clips and put them together, and I want to make more stuff, not less stuff. So I'll still be making videos like that that go really in-depth on one thing, but I can make more stuff if I just set it down and talk and like recap what just happened during the week, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to start by saying, how about those football teams? Oh my goodness. Every single year, there seems to be that like bad team that just suddenly is great on defense, like just has this record-breaking defense um the jaguars three years ago the bears two years ago the 49ers last year and now the washington football team just recorded eight sacks 15 pressures three forced fumbles two interceptions and people are going to be like oh they were that was just a bad o-line that was a snake bitten eagles team i don't care i don't care that's crazy when you do that if you if you can there are a lot of teams in this league that have bad offensive lines. If you can beat up teams with bad offensive lines, you can like handle about half the teams in this league pretty easily. Like there are a lot of bad offensive line teams. You ask like most of the fans, like what's the biggest issue with your team? They'll say offensive line like eight out of 10 times. So I don't really care that it was just the Eagles. When you're putting up a defensive performance like that, that, that makes me sit up and take notice, like, whoa. And uh, in those other three teams that I mentioned, you know, the quarterbacks are Mitchell Trubisky, Blake Bortles, and Jimmy G. So the fact that, that Washington has Dwayne Haskins doesn't really turn me off, because if your defense is playing like that, all you really need is a game manager quarterback, and that's the part that Dwayne Haskins was born to play. He might not be a great quarterback, and he's not a good, not a good playmaker, but he's only thrown one pick in his last five games. In college, he was the ultimate game manager. Like he was, he wasn't doing anything crazy, but it's like he was super efficient, just taking care of the football, stuff like that. So this, this football team is built to play like that. And that's exactly what they want to do. And with seven playoff seeds and in kind of a weaker division, I can see them pulling that off, and I'm saying it right now that I think they do. I think that Washington, after this crazy, chaotic, terrible, terrible offseason, um, do they deserve it? Probably not. Their owner is a terrible person, and I hate him. But good for Ron Rivera, seriously, and good for the players. Um, so I don't know how I feel whenever they win a game, because, man, it is messy at the top, and you should sell the team. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about every game this week, but uh, a couple other ones that interest me. Uh, the Chiefs and the Texans. The Chiefs didn't really... I mean, the Chiefs are really good. Patrick Mahomes is amazing. Honey Badger is amazing. Did you know that? You did. Uh, everything looks super easy for them, and they should be the Super Bowl favorites. This is not a shocking thing. Phone just totally ran out of storage. Um, the Texans... What was my angle? It's like... Something like... I don't know. The Texans... I don't know if the Texans surprised me with their first showing because really none of the outcomes of the Houston Texans this year would shock me they could be bad they could be good I don't know I predicted them to go 11 and 5 because I was looking at that division I'm like man I don't really love the Titans this year someone's got to win though so I was just like Texans best quarterback will have them win 11 and 5 something like that probably a little too high I felt no confidence in that decision but uh yeah so I am a little bit confident after seeing what they did though. And I'm a little bit confident that they are not gonna go 11 and five. I think they're not gonna be very good. And honestly, it's not Deshaun Watson's fault, but he is the reason that I think they're not gonna be very good because I don't think he's in that real top, top tier of quarterbacks that I think can carry that roster to a, a good record. I think that the performance that he had against the Chiefs is going to be kind of his standard for this year. And that wasn't a terrible performance, but it wasn't anything to write home about. I mean, he played kind of like an average quarterback. 
And he's, he's really, really talented, but he's never been that like really efficient guy. Uh, he's been, I think, 12th, 10th, and I want to say 14th in passing DYAR his first three years in the league. His average DVOA is like 10th. Um, and that was all with Hopkins, and now Hopkins is gone. So I think those numbers are going to get worse. That's a pretty safe bet, I would say. So like you get worse than like 10th or 14th or wherever he ranks in DVOA. It's like, he's like 17th, is, or maybe he's 16th. And it's like, you're getting kind of out of the even like top half of starting quarterbacks. And that's not all his fault because Bill O'Brien's not giving him any help at all. But um, yeah, like for the Texans to be really good this year, he's going to have to strap them to his back and he is going to have to carry them. And the more I think about it, the more I think that that isn't going to happen. And this team it might mirror a lot of like the Packers with in the last couple of years of Mike McCarthy. I think you're going to see a lot of that, which is like a talented quarterback heading a really ugly offense. And one play might be, just be absolutely brilliant. And then it's followed up by like five ugly disjointed punt drives. Like that's just kind of the, with a really bad secondary and like a below average defense on the other side. Like, I kind of think that that's going to be the look that you get with these um, Texans. And I watched a lot of those Packers games, and I think it's even going to be to a more severe level because I don't think Bill O'Brien is as bad as Mike McCarthy was at that point. But ugh, it's it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be frustrating. It's, they're still going to win some games because Deshaun Watson isn't terrible. Uh, he's, he's very good. He's probably, I mean, if you redraft the league, where does Watson go? He probably goes fourth. But he is not close to those top three, and you all know who they are. So that that was kind of my takeaway from the Texans. I just I'm I'm selling my Texan stock. What else happened? I think the Vikings. The Vikings are a sneaky contender to be a bottom five team in this league. They cannot cover. They could not cover Devonte Adams. Like they put Cam Dantzler on him. They put Holton Hill on him. They put Mike Hughes on it. Like, who, 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 who did you put on him? And those are their only options to put on him. It's like, you can't cover anyone. And they couldn't get to Rodgers for a sack. And when you can't sack Rodgers, that's really bad because that guy gets sacked all the time. He walks into pressure. He holds the ball. Like, no pressure and no secondary. And Kirk Cousins didn't throw the ball like the entire first half. So they're, they're a run first team in shootouts is just a badly built team. And that's what they are, a badly built team. I think that that game getting kind of really like playing portless, it, it says more about the Vikings being bad than the Packers being good was my main takeaway from that game. Uh, a lot of people had the Vikings winning the division. I, they just have no, like the defensive line their third linebacker, their second wide receiver, their corners. Like, there's just so many holes in that roster. I don't, like, it's going to be a rough year in Minnesota. Um, the Gardner Minshew, I can't, I'm kicking myself. I'm kicking myself because I was so close. I had a script all written out. Um, I was going to do it right before the season started. Was a video about how Gardner Minshew is kind of a legit quarterback. He's, like, kind of good. But... Gardner Minshew is kind of good. This isn't like the most exciting topic. I thought it wouldn't really get a ton of views. I thought, and they take, like I said, they take a long time to make. So I, I didn't, I didn't go all the way through with it. And I'm kicking myself now because, damn, one incompletion, three touchdowns. Like he was on fire. And the Jaguars, like, you could do a lot worse in a passing game than a big three of Minshew and Shark and LaVisca Chenault. Like, those are, that's kind of a, it's not the greatest, but, like, those are three good players, I think. And tanking, if they if their intention was to tank for Lawrence, um, those three are going to make it hard. And uh, C.J. Henderson, shout out C.J. Henderson, that rookie cornerback, played really well week one. Really well week one. He had a pick. Um, it wasn't like a overthrow, like lands in his arms, lucky pick. It was like he is all over T.Y. Hilton on this route. 
kind of pick. Like he was, he had three pass breakups. He got burned kind of once on a comeback route to I Hilton got him there. But really for a rookie cornerback debut, you really can't ask for anything more. He was, he was really cool to watch. Um, yeah, that was, that was nothing else in week one really shocked me. And it shouldn't just, like the 49ers losing, I had a video about them missing the playoffs and Joe Burrow kind of struggling kind of had a video that said that would happen too. So anyone watching me right now should have, should have known all that. Um, yeah, just kind of a, just glad to have football back. Nothing. Cam Newton was cool to watch. Um, they're the dead Patriots team, man, they're so smart. <laughs> who let, who let them get Cam? I wasn't, I wasn't quite sold on Cam Newton's arm because the last time we saw Cam Newton, um, well, he played this the Buccaneers week two, and it was one of the worst games I've ever seen from a quarterback, Corp quarterback. Um, but look sharp. I'm rooting for the Patriots this year. I thought I'd never say it, but that was cool. Josh Allen had his first 300 yard passing game of his career, college or NFL. But still had some bad misses and was playing the Jets. I'm not totally sold on Josh Allen, but that was it was good for him, I guess. Um, still not, yeah, still not sold though. He had a miss in the end zone, that was really, really bad. But he's fun. He's exciting. I'll give him that. I'll probably have a show for week two predictions, like later this week. Maybe I'll go a little bit more in depth uh, if I can think of something interesting and make, you know, put, put, go a little bit more than like this kind of, a little more surface level stuff when I'm just talking like this. But yeah, super glad to have it back. Super glad to have things to talk about. Super glad you watched it to this point. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I'll have stuff later in the week. Have a, have a nice rest of your day.